Hello. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to push data from ShareWell Service Management version 5 to SharePoint 2013 via SOAP Web Services. The goal here is to um, push this data to SharePoint so that you can leverage the uh, functions of the task list, which include the timeline, uh, but also uh, with the ultimate goal of being able to pull that task list down into Project Professional 2013. In a previous video, I showed you how to connect to SharePoint Web Services uh, in ShareWell via SOAP, and uh, so here's a reference to that video. Today, I'm going to show you how to use that connection. So let's get started. Uh, just to review, I'm going into my admin tool here, and I'm going to go into Web Services Manager, and this is the web service I created previously. And if you click Edit, you can see that um, the WSDL is all set up, all the methods are here, and you can refer to that video uh, to see how to do that. Now, from here, I'm going to go into my Client tool. Here I'm on my Tasks table. So I'm going to go to One Step and One Step Manager, and I've already got a One Step created to push tasks to SharePoint. So if I edit that, it's very, it's very simple, very basic. Um, I have the web service call and then I have a pop-up box to show me the results. Uh, in this case I'm going to just delete that because I'm going to do a uh, group of tasks and so I don't want that pop-up coming up every time. So in, let's look at the push tasks step. Um, here I'm leveraging that service which is the list service and today I'm going to use the update list items method and under list name for parameters, I've got the GUID or the list ID from SharePoint. Under updates, let's see if I can maximize this a bit, um, I have uh, a bit of camel code to update SharePoint. And so here what I'm doing is I'm creating a new record with a new ID, and in each of these SharePoint fields, I'm adding either a straight field value or a custom expression. I've got my task rec ID, title, and a couple of uh, dates are worth mentioning here. I've got my due date and my start date. I don't want to pass a null date because uh, that will give me a formatting error. So what I'm doing is I've just created an expression here to grab uh, dates that are available. So for instance on this task, if the due date is not empty, then I'm going to take the task due date. But the tasks in ShareWell uh, don't necessarily have to have due dates. So I can take the close date, um, or I can take the SLA resolution warning date on the incident, the parent incident. Um, so assuming that um, I probably want these tasks uh, resolved and closed, uh, by the, the SLA warning date. So you have many options here and you can build this however you like. Um, and just for this demonstration, to put a default in here, I'm saying if there are no other, uh, no, none of these other dates, let's take the task created time plus seven days. Again, that's just for the sake of the demo. Um, your business uh, will drive those needs. And I did something similar with start date. I'm either taking the start date or the create date for the task. The second important thing to do um, with these date fields is to add a modifier to them. Um, SharePoint likes dates in a very particular format, and uh, it's right here. So what I'm doing is applying a custom format. If you drop this down, you can do all kinds of things. I'm choosing custom at the bottom. And I keep this in a little text file because I can't remember it. And I just paste it in every time I have a date. And there you go. So I'm grabbing all of these fields, status. I'm even sticking in, if you can see here, the ShareWell Rec ID and Task ID, uh, just in case I want to refer back. So that's all set. I can, um, down here, I'm storing my results into these two variables. So the actual web service result, what's returned from the call, and the web service return code. So it's uh, if it errors out, I, I can know, or if it's successful, I can just check that code. All right, so we're good there. And we're good here. So again, here I have um, three pages of tasks. We have 25 tasks. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is run my one step on it. So I right click. I'm going to run for a group. If I wanted to run for the current record, I choose run. 
but I've got a search here. I want to run for group. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we have our web service has fired. So let's go into SharePoint and see what's happened. So here is the task list in question. I'm going to go ahead and just refresh this. And here you can see that all of those tasks have been brought in. And I've got my rec ID if I wanted that. I've got my due date, my task name. I've got various, I even have my task ID from Sharewell. And the description was pulled in as well, including start date and task status. And these are actually Sharewell task statuses. Um, since that, in uh, by default in SharePoint, that lookup, ta that lookup uh, field can have uh, va values input. And so I took advantage of that. So there you go. And you can go ahead and start doing thing, fun things like uh, we can start adding our Sharewell tasks to the timeline here. So here we've got a couple. We can kind of get a sense for how this is going. Um, and what, all, what we can also do, of course, is if we can add it to a SharePoint task list, then that means we can also go into Project Professional and pull it down as well. So what I can do here in Project Professional 2013 is, is grab that task list into a new project file. So I can click New from SharePoint Task List. I can enter my address, check it. There's my task list. That's the one I want. So I can click OK. And here I can pull that into Project. And I've got the timeline here. But what this also allows you to do is to um, merge this with other projects, uh, bring it into a program project file, uh, run reports, and any other kind of dashboards you can do in project, which I won't cover here. Uh, but that's it. So today we covered um, how to execute a web service via SOAP in ShareWell Service Management to push task data up into SharePoint. Thanks for watching.